Hello 6080 classmates, my name is Alyssa Liakos and I am part of the Flickr group presentation. The purpose of our presentation is to educate all of you about this amazing photo sharing program. Throughout the presentation, you'll learn exactly what Flickr is, the ease with which you can install the program, plus the best way you can use Flickr in your library or institution, and many other things. I hope that you guys enjoy our presentation and are just as excited about using Flickr as I am. Enjoy the presentation! Alright, so first things first, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background information on the Flickr program. Flickr was originally created by Ludacorp in 2004 and was acquired by Yahoo in 2005. Today, there are over 87 million registered members and more than 3.5 million images are uploaded every day. That's pretty impressive. One of the great features of Flickr is that it's pretty much customizable to your needs. There are three different types of Flickr accounts that you can create. Free, Ad Free, and Doubler. Each of these accounts has its advantages and disadvantages, so it's up to you to decide which option is best based on your own library or institution. The first account, the free account, gives you up to one terabyte of photo and video storage. You may upload photos of up to 200 megabytes per photo. You can upload 1080p HD videos up to one gigabyte each. You can have video playback of up to three minutes each, and you can upload and download in full original quality with unlimited monthly bandwidth. The ad-free version is $49.99 per year. You have all of the benefits of the free account with no ads. And the doubler account is $499.99 per year with two terabytes of photo and video space and all of the benefits of the free account. If you're thinking about getting a Flickr page for your library or institution, it's important to familiarize yourself with some of the do's and don'ts for starting a Flickr page. All of these guidelines can be found on Flickr's website at www.flickr.com. Some of the do's are play nice, it's, Flickr is part of a global community and they want you to be polite and respectful in your interactions with other members. Do upload content that you've created, meaning respect the copyright of others. Do moderate your account. All content has to be appropriately monitored as safe, moderate, or restricted. Do link back to Flickr when you post your Flickr content elsewhere. And most importantly, do enjoy Flickr. Now for some of the don'ts, don't upload anything that isn't yours. Again, that gets into copyright issues. Don't forget the children. If you wouldn't show the image you'd like to upload to a child, you probably shouldn't be posting it on Flickr. Don't show nudity in your buddy icon. Only content that is considered safe is appropriate for your buddy icon. Don't upload content that is illegal or prohibited. Don't vent your frustrations or rant at other members. Don't be creepy. Don't use your account to host web graphics like logos and banners. And don't use Flickr to sell. Now that you're a little bit more familiar with Flickr, I'll turn you over to the rest of the group so you can find out. Hi everyone! Now that you've learned about what Flickr is, I hope you're excited to learn a little bit about how it works. My name is Janine, and in this segment of our Flickr presentation, I'll go over with you some basic Flickr functions. Step by step, we'll go over how to upload your photos and videos, where you can change the name, add a description, add tags, say who's in the photo or video, change permissions, and change you can see your photo or video. 
From there, you'll learn to edit your photos, organize your photos into sets, and learn to share your photos and videos with anyone you like. Okay, so you've logged into Flickr already with a Yahoo, Facebook, or Google account, and now you're on your main page. Flickr is a photo sharing site, so let's try uploading one. Go over to Upload, and here I can browse my computer for the file, or what's kind of cool, I can just drag and drop the photo or video on over. All right, so here we can edit the photo's name. Oh, all right, stay on there. Add a description. Add any tags, one at a time. Press enter. Add people, who's in the photo, just me. Add to a pre-existing or create a new set, but we'll hold off on that for right now. Add to any groups and owner settings. I can change the copyright level, keep all rights reserved to allow other people to use it. Um, change who can see it. Let's see, I only want family and friends. Alright, so let's go ahead and confirm, upload to my photo stream. Okay, so here's my photo stream where you can see all the photos and videos I've uploaded. As you can see, it looks like we have two of the same photo, so let's go into edit and delete one of these. Yes, delete it. And on the edit page, you can click on various elements and edit the photo here, or if you click on the photo, you can do more advanced editing by clicking on these three little dots. You have all of these options here. And one cool thing would be to edit the photo in Aviary, where you can edit things like contrast, brightness, or even add some silly stickers if you want. But let's not do that. All right, let's say I want to edit more than one photo at a time. I can go over to my U tab and go down to Organize. Like uploading, I can just drag and drop any photos I wanted to organize right into the window. And let's say I've added one I didn't want to, just drag it right on back down. I can also search for photos if I have a bunch. Let's say I only want photos with the LIS tag. So I've got photo and video with the LIS tag. Here are all my editing options. Let's go ahead and add these to a new set. So we're going to name my set LIS, add the description, photos and videos used in LIS projects, and save. Okay, let's go back out to my photo stream. It's okay, I do want to leave organizer and go over to sets. Okay, great. Here's my new LIS set. All right, let's say I want to share my set. All I have to do is go over to this icon here, share this via, and we have a whole bunch of options here to share, as you can see. You can also just grab the link if you just want to copy and paste that into a chat or anything. All right, so some of my photos aren't viewable to the public, so I can just add a guest pass so that when I do send the link, they'll be able to see it. All right, so now I can share my video. Let's go ahead and sign out. Hello, uh, my name is Adrian Clark. So now that you guys know about what Flickr is, hopefully, and various ways to upload and organize your photos, I am going to tell you probably one of the best ways to get your photos out there and to get them um, known and discussed, and that is to join groups. I will tell you how to search for a group, um, I'll tell you how to create a group, and then how to join a group. Um, groups are probably the easiest way to get known, and they're the best way to get any kind of feedback on your on your photos or any kind of help you may need. Um, there's really a group for anything you want. So without further ado, let's get, uh, let's get learning. So if we go to the 
Flickr taskbar, um, the groups are going to be listed under communities. When we hover over communities, we can see group lists, recent discussions, search groups, and create a group. When I click on group list, I am greeted with the groups I belong to. For the sake of this demonstration, I have joined a couple groups that might be relevant for our class. Inside of the libraries and librarians group, or inside any group really, we have this top taskbar, which would make a lot more sense once you know all the tools. Um, we have photos and discussions and members. And then we have maps, so photos can be geotagged. Um, we have about the group and we have invite friends. Right. When we go back to photos, we're greeted with this, on the right side, this long list of pictures. And this will just keep going. So if we scroll all the way down, we can see that it keeps generating more pictures. Um, seemingly endlessly, really. But let's go back up to the top. So when you're in the photos, on the left side, you have this news. So any any recent information for the, for the group will show up here. And then the next thing you get is discussions. Um, and really, uploading your photo and the discussions are probably the biggest things in groups. So inside the discussion tab, we have a list of all of the discussions that have been posted by members of the group. This is a cool, really cool way to um, interact with fellow users and learn some stuff as well too. So if you're joining a, you know, a flash photography course, a lot of the discussions will be geared towards learning how to use photography with Flash, which is really cool. On the right side, we here, we have add a topic, um, which means that you can you know you can start a discussion post whenever you want. Okay, so let's move on and talk about the second part, which is recent discussions. Now I haven't joined any discussions on this account, so um, you can see it's nothing nothing is here. Um, but if I have, if someone commented on a post that I made in discussion, or if someone replied to a post, um, that would show up here. Okay, so let's go to the third part of communities, which is um, search for groups. So let me just go ahead and search for, for pugs. I'm greeted with um, a variety of different ways to sort it. I have here by relevance, but you can also do by activity, so how active the group is, how large the, the group is, and how old the group is. And joining a group is actually really, really simple if it's a public group. So I can just go ahead and go to Pug Life, click, click join, and it'll give me a confirmation. And then that's it, and I'm already in the group. Creating a group is very, very simple as well. We can see here that we can do it from here, or we can do it from communities. And I'm going to go ahead and start from the communities. So clicking create will give us to this page. And I will name it LIS 680 is a fun class because we all know that it's a fun class. Right, so the next part is um, how you want the group to be displayed to non members. So if someone searches Flickr and finds your group, you can choose what you want to show to them. Um, so this next part is choosing what you want the members of your group to be called. And that'll bring you to this administration page. And at that point, you can choose, you know, you can change, choose to change the group rules. Um, you can customize the icon, you can customize who's in it. And that's it guys. Um, again, this is Adrian Clark. Hope you guys keep watching to learn a bit more about Flickr. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jill Anderson, and in this part of the presentation, we're going to explore how libraries can utilize Flickr. There are many different ways libraries can use Flickr. We're going to look at two. We're going to look at the commons and how local libraries can use Flickr. Heritage institutions, such as the Smithsonian or the Library of Congress, use the commons. The commons is a part of Flickr that has the goal of allowing the public to have access to public photography archives. It also creates a way for the public to contribute information and knowledge. We're going to look at the commons now. This is the commons. You can access the commons by coming over here to explore and choosing the commons from the drop-down menu. And here you can see 
a list of the various institutes that take part in the commons. Much of what I learned about the commons is from a research article called Learning to Share about digitized collections on Flickr. If you scroll down, you can see various examples of what can be found in the commons, kind of a sampler. Here we're going to take a closer look at the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian Institute and the Library of Congress were the pioneers in using Flickr to share their digital content. They've been on Flickr since 2008, and they feel this has been a successful experiment driving interest in their digital collection. You can see their various sets here, and we're going to take a closer look at pictures of Abraham Lincoln. If you look at individual pictures, you can see how users can comment or add information about this picture. They can also ask this picture be added to their groups. It's important to note that everything in the Commons must have no known copyright restrictions. A public library might use Flickr for several reasons. Pictures on Flickr are easy to embed in a website or on a blog. You can find the link to the HTML code for your picture. Your library can also be found through Flickr tags with the name and the location to your library, creating more awareness for your library. I would like to show you how several different libraries use Flickr. The Colorado College Tut Library uses Flickr for many reasons. One is to show historic photos of the library. These are archives that may otherwise sit in a file in the basement. For example, the academic library where I intern has a wonderful collection hidden away in the basement. Here's the New Jersey Association using Flickr to show pictures from their 2012 conference. Flickr can be a great tool to network with other libraries and librarians. These librarians can start conversations over Flickr. Plymouth Library in the UK uses Flickr to give virtual tours of their library branches. You can see here that they have a set for each one of their branches. Let's take a peek inside one of them. Yeah. This is my own local library, the Kent District Library. They have a set of photos that simply shows the outside of each branch. And here is a picture of my branch, the Granville branch. We have a nice outdoor stage. My personal favorite way libraries are utilizing Flickr is by showing fun events that the library holds. Here is a loud librarian showing Pirate Night at the library. You can see that this event attracted people of all ages. Using Flickr is a great way for libraries to show that we're relevant and that it's okay to have fun in our building. If you were able to see how your library might utilize this great tool, you can network, share your digital collection, promote your library branches, preserve your library heritage, and show all of the fun events your library hosts. Hi guys, this is Paul Barbatano from the Flickr Group, and I will be providing the epic conclusion to our group presentation. Prior to my speaking, you heard from Adrian, who talked about groups and how one would go about finding and joining a group on Flickr. We heard from Melissa, who gave us some background information on the website, as well as talked a little bit about the do's and don'ts of using a website. We heard from Janine, who talked about signing up initially and logging in onto your account on Flickr, and then how you could then add and edit photos on Flickr. And finally, we heard from Jill, who talked about the Flickr Commons area on the website, as well as how some local libraries are using and sharing photos on their Flickrs. I'm going to talk a little bit about some very cool stuff the Flickr is now doing with both books, book covers, book collections, and book publishing. Hi guys, I've gone ahead and returned to the main Flickr page. And as you can see, I have options at the top to sign up for the website, to explore the website, and upload personal photos and videos. What I want to discuss a little bit is a search function on Flickr. And then as you can see, I've gone ahead and typed in book covers for my search. The reason I've gone ahead and typed in book covers is not only because it's a beneficial part of a major in the LIS schools in general, but because it's a personal fascination of mine. I'm a voracious reader, and I love browsing libraries, bookstores, used bookstores especially, and Amazon to find new writers and readers to share. I've done this since a young age, and I've personally always secretly had the fascination of being a graphic designer and hope to one day 
possibly do something in the graphic design field with book covers. So I've gone ahead and searched book covers and found a couple groups that I wanted to share because they have fascinating covers that I think would be beneficial to our discussion. So the first group I found, as Adrian discussed earlier, is one called Antique Books. And this group has nearly 11,600 photos and nearly 1,400 members and has been active since 2005. And as you can see, some of the pictures in this collection include finishing tools that were used to create a book, a copy of Shakespeare's comedy of a Midsummer Night's Dream, and what looks to be a family album. So lots of cool stuff here. The next one I want to share is one I actually check daily. This is called the Book Cover Club. This is another group that has 58,000 photos, nearly 58,000 photos, and nearly 3,300 members. And this was also created in 2005. And this one's cool because this has books and book collections from all over the world. As you can see, there's a really cool Jules Verne collection, as well as books from across the world, including Europe. There's also a very cool book for a book, very cool cover for a book called The Master of Falkenhurst, which looks like a noir title from several years ago. It only costs 95 cents, which is great, because books are so expensive now. It's great that books and paperbacks used to be so cheap. And the cover art's amazing. The last group I want to talk about is the Penguin Paperback Spotters Guild. The Penguin Paperback Spotters Guild is cool because it's another group with thousands of photos and thousands of members and has also been active since 2005. And this one's cool because Penguin is one of the world's oldest publishers and has been around for nearly a century. And this one's cool because it includes what looks like a book on private eyes, a recently republished copy of The Metamorphosis by Kafka, and what looks to be a collection of Agatha Christie books, possibly at a used bookstore, but also possibly a home collection. And Penguin books are great because they've always had amazing graphic design, never really changed that much over the year. They do one thing well, and they know what they're doing. The last thing I want to talk about is that Flickr has added a new creator element to their website. And this is great because you can upload photos and videos to Flickr and create physical photo books to share with family and friends. Instead of having to go to the website all the time and look for your photos or to email them, you can actually have a physical copy as an artifact that you could then give as gifts or have in your home. And this is also great because independent publishing has seen such a boom in recent years, and it's great to know that Flickr has jumped in the game as well. So those are just a couple of things that Flickr can do with book covers, book cover collections, as well as their own publishing arm, which is a great idea, especially as technology moves forward. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time. On behalf of all my group members, we'd like to thank you for watching and listening. And we hope everyone has a safe and happy holiday season, and we wish you the best. Thank you, and take care.